Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and that's how a bike should look after cycling the world for so long like I noticed you've had a different bike though that's not the one you travel or that's not the one you started off with right it's the same bike over 13 years oh it is the same bike I painted you just painted it got you okay black mm -hmm. so I like yellow you oh yeah I painted all yellow wow okay one bike for 13 years that's that's amazing and very that's... lucky so i i put my bicycle name lucky i make the uh -huh. name for my bicycle uh -huh. lucky lucky and it's lucky wow never been stolen <laughs> and the bags too i noticed in the story this morning the same bags for 13 years oh uh, just the first just the six months uh-huh i changed it okay after six months uh-huh and then from that time okay so over 12 years mm. okay. wow so 13 years, how many countries? Um, Do you, can um, you name it off the top of your head? Maybe 80. No, 80. I, I didn't travel much, actually. Mm -hmm. because, uh, I mean, I didn't, uh, you know, there are like 195 countries, mm -hmm. and I didn't go half reason. Well, but you've still been to over 80? Yeah, and six wow. continents. <laughs> six continents, that's, wow, that is so impressive. So impressive. going you know, like I said back down the same route that I just came down <laughs> so yeah it would have been nice to, to cycle that with her and uh, you know we had a good conversation and uh, it would have been nice but I'm going this way <laughs> and so good luck to Jen and it was nice meeting you and uh, I wish you all the best of luck in Germany and so yeah all right, now we're going to Sokcho. All right, so I don't know where the original border ends, but uh, last night I did it live and somebody was like, yeah, actually that area you're in, Nick, used to be the original like North Korean uh, region. And so I was like, it finally clicked. I don't know why I didn't think of that before. You know, yesterday I went to the Kim Il Sung Resort, which I'll play that right now. <laughs> right now I'm standing in front of the home of Kim Jong Il's vacation home back in 1948 to 1950, it said. And so before the war broke out, Kim Jong Il, the leader of North Korea, the founder of North Korea, his family would come here and uh, enjoy the beautiful beach. There's a picture over here of Kim Jong-il, the, the second leader of North Korea, sitting on the steps right here. I'll show you that in a second once they get done with the photos, but I found that to be pretty crazy. Let me see if I can't squeeze through here. And so here's a picture of Kim Jong-il the second leader of North Korea when he was only six years old. <laughs> Sitting right here. Bam. I think we just turned into a museum and a gallery. It's not exactly the home anymore. Damn. Okay. Here you go, this might be the only part of uh, the museum where they have some of the old furniture and bedding and things like that. Because other than that, it's all just like a museum and a gallery. Definitely feels like a castle though, look at all the stone. And right up here, yeah, 
You have one hell of a view, that's for sure. Well, dang, definitely not as cool as I thought it was going to be, but <laughs> oh well. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know why they didn't click yesterday that, okay, Kim Il-sung was going to that area in 4850. He obviously wasn't going into South Korea, but you never know. <laughs> and so, uh, oh, look at this shaggy dog. Hey, buddy, you okay? Need a haircut, man. Okay. Uh, but anyways, uh, so the uh, the Kim Il Sung Resort was on the North Korean side, obviously, and so I don't know. It just kind of again makes me think about the grandma and her story, and you know, she from 45 to 53, she was you know right on the line, starting off in North Korea, and so she did first. I don't know, six, seven years in North Korea. And so maybe she was talking a little bit about that uh, when I couldn't understand her Korean, but it's just mind blowing to me and just how close she was to being stuck on the other side of the border. And not only that, how many families and how many people were so close, like when the final lines were drawn up, boom, your destiny was set by that line all those people on the border and Gosong apparently she was saying there's a Gosong County in North Korea as well and uh, it's beautiful out here and she was saying how the Gosong mayor and the from the north and the south got together not too long ago in the north and I guess the the North Korean Gosong leader jokes like well we're the real Gosong or something like that uh, that's what she said this morning when we were having breakfast. But, oh man, I wish I could talk to her and ask her so many questions freely and uh, yeah. What an amazing woman. What an amazing life story. I wish her nothing but the best. This is pretty cool and pretty random. You don't see this very often, or at least I haven't yet. It's a lot of the uh, a lot of homes that look like they're just built in the traditional old style way, with the kind of curved roof like that. It's kind of cool looking. Every once in a while, you'll see a home built like that, but not uh, not in a row like that. I'm sure they were all built like that back in the day. Hello. Working hard for their whole life sometimes. Man. But at the same time, that's probably why she's gonna live for another 10 years. She's moving and doing stuff every single day. I'm sure if she uh, called it quits, she probably wouldn't last much longer. And that's it. Before I forget, I just want to share one more thing that Jen had to say. Uh, she was telling me about how she's done the bike course from, I don't know if it's a bike course, but she's rode along the border between China and North Korea. And so that was her whole goal, she was saying, is that she wanted to travel the world for however long it took and then cycle home. So she never flew home once. To South Korea and so I find that so amazing <laughs> so she she was on the road for 13 or 12 13 years and her goal was to cycle through China and then hopefully go through North Korea and then from North Korea to South and so unfortunately you know obviously she can't do that and so she said that was a you know a big disappointment and uh, she wished she could have cycled through North Korea and into the south. That was her final goal. That looks like an interesting monument. Let's go have a look at that. 
And so, yeah, I just thought that was cool that she's been able to cycle from, you know, she's about to do the DMZ course on this side of North Korea, North Korea, and then she also did the northern border. So, pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. Maybe one day I'll do that too, go to China and cycle along the North Korea-China border. Yeah, my parents would kill me. Okay. This is a really cool one. I like the mosaic that they have here, the tile. They have all the pictures of the coast right here. And this little piece right here, let me just read it to you. It's pretty cool. It says, Gosong has always been a place that has kept the painful history of division and the wounds expressed in longing. This work is a sculpture created considering the regional characteristics of the south and the north facing each other. So it says, inside the square frame of 2,700 millimeters, which symbolizes the gate of unification. And the blue and red colors represent the south and north, and on the front and back, a girl and a boy symbolizing hope and harmony are engraved in relief to earnestly wish for peace and unification on this land. So you can come up here to the fifth floor, and get a latte, maybe a bingsu and uh, have a nice view. I am just not feeling the bingsu yet. I need to work for it a little harder. Alright, so first, I need to see what exactly he's looking for. Is that it? Yes. Okay, so, ah, oh, little muscles, okay. Ah. <laughs> What is this one? Yeah, the kind of the octopus. Ah, okay, the squid. Squid, yeah. Squid, okay. So this is a squid fishing boat. Right. So this is the raw fish plate. <laughs> like, I guess, sashimi? Sashimi, yeah, yeah, yeah. 